Today, we're re-reviewing the Core Ultra 9 285K. No, I'm just kidding. We're actually throwing Intel's latest flagship CPU to the wolves. And by that, I mean comparing it head-to-head -head with the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D in 45 games. But just quickly, before we get into the data, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards, including the brand new Stalker 2 edition RTX 4070 Ti Super. This special edition model is based on MSI's gaming slim design, meaning it occupies just two expansion slots and comes with upgraded Torx 5.0 fans and Trifrosa 3 cooling. As this is the Stalker 2 edition, it comes with a stunning theme design, complete with a custom shroud that's ready for the exclusion zone, as well as an included game redemption. Nvidia's Ada Lovelace GPUs are the best way to enjoy ray tracing with improved, more realistic visuals and lighting in the latest and greatest games like Stalker 2, Black Myth Wukong, Alan Wake 2, and Cyberpunk 2077. Plus, there's support for AI-powered DLSS 3 frame generation and reflex, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. What I want to know is how do they compare across a massive range of games, or rather how much faster is the 9800X 3D across a massive range of games? And for this video, I will be sticking to the new format that we introduced with the last comparison. So rather than just show you the individual results for around a dozen of the titles tested, and then the margins for the rest of the results, I'm going to show you the results for five games at a time. That way we can show you the FPS data for every single one of the games tested. Also, as usual, all CPU gaming benchmarks will be conducted at 1080p using a GeForce RTX 4090. And if you'd like to learn more about why this is actually the best way to evaluate CPU performance for games today and in the future, I have a few videos linked in the description that you can check out to learn more. Okay, let's get in the graphs. For our first batch of games, let's start from the top with The Last of Us Part 1, and this is an example where the 285K does quite well, and as a result the 9800X 3D is just 5% faster, which is really a negligible margin. Also, in this example both CPUs were extremely fast, though you'd expect that from flagship parts. Unfortunately, the 285K stinks in Cyberpunk 2077, choking the RTX 4090 down to just 151 FPS, and as a result, the Ryzen 7 processor was an incredible 45% faster. The 9800X 3D also crushes the 285K in Hogwarts Legacy, delivering 43% greater performance. And somehow the margins are even more brutal in ACC, where the AMD processor enjoys a 75% margin. Things do dramatically improve for Intel though in Spider-Man Remastered, but even so, the 9800X 3D is still seen to be 15% faster. Now moving on, we have Baldur's Gate 3. And here the 9800X 3D is 34% faster, going from 131 FPS up to 176 FPS. The margins are even more extreme in Homeworld 3. Here the 9800X 3D is 58% faster when comparing the average frame rate, and an incredible 117% faster when looking at the 1% lows. The 285K was also unexpectedly slow in A Plague Tale Requiem, rendering just 123 FPS on average, whereas the 9800X 3D was good for 195 FPS, and that's another massive 59% performance increase. The 9800X 3D was also much faster in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, allowing for 95 FPS on average, and that's a 34% uplift over the 285K. The 285K though did put in one of its best performances in Starfield, though even here the 9800X 3D was 10% faster. Moving on to Horizon Forbidden West, we find another rare example where the 285K performs really well, coming in just a few percent slower than the 9800X 3D. Though it doesn't fare nearly as well in Horizon Zero Dawn, where the 9800X 3D is seen to be 29% faster. The Ryzen processor was also 46% faster in Watch Dogs Legion, and 28% faster in Far Cry 6, though the margin is next to nothing in Throne and Liberty. Next we have Hitman 3, and here AMD's latest 3D vCache processor is just 7% faster, with both CPUs delivering significantly higher performance than is required to enjoy this older game. I've also updated the Callisto Protocol benchmark to a less GPU-bound test, and as a result, the 9800X 3D is 42% faster than the 285K. We're also seeing a 24% increase in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and as was the case in Hitman 3, performance in this example is much higher than is actually required. But it's a good benchmark tool for comparing the gaming performance of these two processors. Then we see that performance in Halo Infinite and Warhammer 3 are near enough to identical. 
The next set of results starts with Black Ops 6, and here the 9800X 3D was 19% faster. So again, although the 285K is more than capable in this example, it's problematic that the Ryzen 7 part is so much faster, suggesting that it will age a lot better. We're also seeing similar gains for the 9800X 3D over the 285K in Borderlands 3, 21% in this example. Then we see that the 285K gets slammed in the Rift Breaker, where the 3D V-Cache part is a whopping 42% faster. Remnant 2 plays at relatively low frame rates on the 285K, at least for a high-end part, and the 30% increase here for the 9800X 3D certainly won't go unnoticed by those with high refresh rate monitors. Then we have another smashing in Star Wars Jedi Survivor where the 9800X 3D is seen to be 45% faster. And here we have yet more data. Those of you after the ultimate performance in War Thunder will be disappointed with the 285K. As 266 FPS, it isn't anything special in this title, and it also means that the 9800X 3D was nearly 50% faster. However, performance in Skull and Bones, Returnal, and Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, is all much the same, so there's no real winner here. Then we see a 19% uplift for the 9800X 3D in Dying Light 2. The 9800X 3D was also only slightly faster in Forza Horizon 5, though it was 21% faster in Forza Motorsport, and then we see that the Core Ultra 9 processor gets completely annihilated in Gears 5, rendering just 180 FPS with 1% loads of 101 FPS, making the 9800X 3D 62% faster. We also see more mild gains in Ghost of Tsushima and Hunt Showdown, though the 9800X 3D was comfortably faster in both examples. Here we see that the Zen 5 Ryzen processor crushes the 285K by a 27% margin in World War Z and 18% in F124. We're also seeing a similar margin in Rainbow Six Siege where the Ryzen processor enabled 26% greater performance and then 30% greater performance in Counter-Strike 2. Then we have Fortnite and sadly I was unable to get this game to run on the 285K due to a compatibility issue with the easy anti-cheat. I did report this issue to Intel a little over a week ago now and they tell me they're working on a solution with Epic Games, so hopefully it'll be working soon. Then finally, we have the last set of results, starting with Assassin's Creed Mirage, where the 9800X 3D leads by a comfortable 22% margin, pushing frame rates above 200 FPS. Interestingly, when comparing the average frame rate in Valhalla, the 9800X 3D was just 5% faster, but a massive 64% faster when looking at the 1% lows, and this data is based on a 3-run average. Space Marine 2 is a seriously CPU limited game, so the additional 27% performance offered by the 9800X 3D is a big deal, and it'll be fully realized by those who are using high refresh rate displays. Likewise, Star Wars Outlaws is a very CPU demanding game, but in this example, the 9800X 3D was just 5% faster. And then finally, we have Dragon Age The Valguard, and here the 9800X 3D was 15% faster. So here's how the Ryzen 7, 9800X 3D and Core Ultra 9 285K compare head to head across the 45 games tested. There's really no examples where the Ryzen processor was slower, anything within a 5% margin I deem to be a tie, and 1-3% to isn't statistically significant. Now across the 45 games, we found that the 9800X 3D was on average 24% faster, which is quite a bit lower than our review data. But then the review does focus heavily on CPU limited gaming. In this example, we do have quite a few games that are more GPU limited than CPU limited, such as Forza Horizon 5, for example. What is troubling though for the 285K is how many games there were where the margin exceeded 40%. Hopefully this is something Intel can address, but I fear the 285K just might not be that great for games. Now, if we look at the 1% lows, we see that overall the margin is much the same with the 9800X 3D, offering 29% greater 1% lows on average, and for the most part, we're looking at double-digit gains, but overall, the averages and 1% lows do tell a similar story. Okay, so to say that was a one-sided bashing, and AMD was holding the 3D Vcash hammer, would be to state the obvious. But yeah, the 285K got annihilated, and I don't have a 285k box because intel never sends retail packaging probably something you want to look into intel because i apart from the processor itself i don't really have anything to sit here to let you guys know that 285k versus 900x 3d anyway it's probably a small detail but yeah having a retail box would be nice for b-roll and yeah these sort of purposes anyway you might think uh saying 
that this thing absolutely annihilated, smashed, crushed, defeated. All the language I've used throughout this video is a bit over the top. And after all, the 285K did deliver perfectly acceptable gaming performance in most of the titles tested. But also, we are talking about Intel's latest, not necessarily greatest, but latest most high-end CPU. And it's certainly not cheap at $630 US. Now, sure, it is a much better productivity CPU, but that's not the battle the 9800X 3D is designed to fight. It is a gaming CPU. And as it stands, it's the best gaming CPU, with the next best thing being AMD's previous generation 7800X 3D. Worse still for the 285K, we're expecting the 9950X 3D early next year, and there's a good chance it will take the productivity crown away from the 285K. Though, as it currently stands, I'm not even sure the 285K has that honor. That's because the 9950X is certainly faster in a good number of productivity workloads. Anyway, getting back to gaming, if you're after the best of the best when it comes to CPU performance, Intel no longer even gets a look. And that's pretty shocking. I don't think there's too much hope for the 285K either. The 9800X 3D is just too fast. Intel has admitted they missed the mark with Arrow Lake and have promised performance fixes by December, so next month, but I'm not really sure what to expect there. Intel's Robert Halleck has publicly stated that certain combinations of BIOS and OS level settings created issues that hampered performance. And I certainly think there are a number of Windows scheduling issues that can be addressed and should stabilize the performance across a wide range of games. There's also the compatibility issues with stuff like Easy Anti-Cheat, which need to be fixed, and I'm sure they will be shortly. Anyway, I'm aware of Intel's statements surrounding Arrow Lake performance, so if they do manage to get out some kind of update before years end, you can rest assured I'll retest everything that you've seen here. And that is going to do it for this comparison. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, do the YouTube stuff. We also have the join button if you want to become a Harbour Unboxed member. Uh, there's also Patreon where you can do that as well. Either we'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, and Q&A stuff. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.